Hello, everybody. I'm here with Shayla Ortel. She's been a psychotherapist in private practice for 28 years, currently practicing in Centerville, Virginia. She is the Tara Mandala Satellite Sangha leader for Northern Virginia, also a certified Beating Your Demons facilitator, which is a kind of internal work where you listen to the parts of your mind that are unhappy or disruptive or causing you pain, and you try to hear what their message is and see if you can satisfy what they need so they become allies instead of internal sources of conflict for you. Shayla has been a Virginia Master Gardener in the past. She is currently a member of the Shenandoah Valley Master Naturalist Chapter for the past nine years. She has studied and practiced Buddhism primarily under the guidance of teachers in the Tibetan tradition. And so I'm really happy and grateful, Shayla, that you took the time out of your schedule to be here to do this. So um, my first question for you, how did you become interested in meditation and kindness practice? Yeah, so um, I, I lost a significant relationship back in 2001 and um, was kind of isolated from people for, for quite a while. I would go to work and you know see my family and occasionally from time to time I'd meet with a friend. Um, but I wasn't really that interested in interacting, interacting with people. And then at a certain point, I knew I wanted to be around them. I, you know, wanted the company and the presence of people, but I, um, I just didn't want to talk. And so I started to ask myself, you know, like where on earth do people gather together and not talk? And I got the idea you know, I think that's probably what happens in meditation groups. So, you know, that seems like a good place to feel like I'm with people, but it's quiet. And um, so I started looking around and I found one near me. And I lived um, in a not as populated place as I live now. So I, I had all kinds of skeptic skepticism, I wouldn't find a group. And it turned out there was one like within walking distance from um, my office. So, and I knew people in it, which was interesting. So um, in that group, um, people would often share inspirational quotes and um, readings about, you know, from people who meditate or books on meditation, or um, sometimes there were sharings, you know, about and from people who did other heart-centered practices. So um, kindness as a practice, I don't think really even occurred to me until someone from that group, I don't remember who it was, but people share the most interesting things to me. And uh, one night someone was talking about how the Dalai Lama was noted for having said, um, my religion is kindness. And I, um, I don't think, you know, I don't think it ever really occurred to me that kindness could be a religion, first of all, but also that, you know, given that religion is something a person usually practices, that it could be a, a practice, like you could decide to do it on purpose. I think I thought at that point, like some people are and some people aren't, and that's the way it is, but I never, yeah, I never thought you could just decide to practice it on purpose. So um, later on in that same group, uh, people would talk about um, the divine abode uh, practices, which um, sometime later I learned are also referred to as the four immeasurable practices. And one of them is um, the practice of loving kindness. So I got curious about that and started to um, look for more information about it and um i found a book i actually found it i've had this for years but the first book i found was by um b allen wallace called the four immeasurables right <laughs> so um so that was the beginning of the, the you know the idea you can actually practice kindness on purpose in different ways um you know out in the world or 
you know, formal guided meditations. You know, there's all kinds of ways to do that. So, how do you practice? How is it? How is it influenced you? Just in your day to day life, and your mind, and your heart. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I over time it has influenced me. I mean, one of the things I've noticed is the more often I practice it, the more I can see the effect of it, and. Um, in thinking about an example of that, um, you know, for this conversation, um, I uh, have been affected, you know, influenced by it over time through experiences of, of grocery shopping. So um, at a certain point in that same meditation group, you know, people would come in and they would share what happens when I do different meditations. Someone came in and said, well, I tried I try to, you know, just feel kindly towards um, people, anyone around me when I went grocery shopping this week. And then he shared, you know, how that went. And so then other people, including me, thought, well, that, that sounds interesting. We'll see that, what happens when you do that. And so, um, you know, I'll preface this by saying that when I don't go into the grocery store, um, trying to feel kindly toward people that um my normal frame of mind i'm not wishing people harm but i'm you know grocery shopping is not my favorite thing i'm often irritated that i have to be there at all and then that starts to be <laughs> reflected in how i'm feeling toward people so if i just go without you know trying to do anything i'm probably going to be irritated someone's going you know they're going too slow they're standing too close they're being too loud this is taking too long i mean i i can be you know i've been irritated by before i even get into the store you know like how people are driving into the parking lot how they're pulling out how they parked that i can't get into my car that i can't get out of my car um but if I go into the grocery store with the intention of trying to feel kindly toward people, one of the first things I've noticed that happens is um, without intending it, I'm automatically slowing down. And so then like inwardly, there's all this space and room, not just for other people to take the time they need, but for me to take the time I need. So, you know, I notice more um, in relation to what I'm actually trying to do for myself, but um, I tend to notice a lot more uh, that's satisfying in relation to other people. So, um, you know, when you're when I'm irritated at people, I'm I'm not looking, I'm not seeing what's interesting about them or what I enjoy about them or or even what I'm grateful you know, for. And um, so like examples of that would be, I mean, on more than one occasion in that space of, of kindness towards people, I'll notice, um, and you can tell if you're slowing down to look for it, there are cashiers that are genuinely caring about your groceries. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, and they're trained to pack them a certain way, but there are certain cashiers where it's just really clear that they want this to be a good experience for you. They are absolutely, certainly going to guarantee that you're they're double bagged. There's nothing heavy that's going to fall out and smash on the pavement. You know, they're putting the light things on the heavy things, so none of your stuff is crushed. The cold stuff is going in a bag, and I'm. And I, and I notice things like this, right? Oh, I just love the way they're doing this. Or, um, you know, or I'm imagining how much better I'm going to feel trying to unload my groceries on the other end, right? Like, I love that I'll be able to take the cold stuff out and just put it in the fridge. I'm not going to have to separate it all out and make a million trips. It's like one bag to the grocery, to the refrigerator, and the rest goes wherever the rest goes, you know? So, it's just stuff like that that um, I just notice. And then the other thing that 
tends to happen automatically is I'm smiling. So, you know, now I don't normally, when I'm irritated about having to grocery shop, I don't have any sense of what I'm doing or not doing. But I, again, I think it's just this state of mind of kindness that invites these other, it invites the space to sort of notice these other positive things. And I have found myself smiling in the grocery store, which is hilarious. Like, like I say, not when I am not thinking about it, it's really not something I look forward to naturally, you know, but um, I'm smiling and, um, and then people are friendly back, you know, and I could give you so many examples of, of these sweet interactions. Um, one of the ones I, I was, and again, it's just the sense of when you're in a certain frame of mind, it invites other positive, you know, states of mind. And I'm, I'm not, you know, when I am intending to feel kindly towards someone, it really is just that. I'm not trying to go into the grocery store and like actually say something kind or do something kind. But what tends to happen is these kind conversations or, you know, very kind actions. And um, one of the examples I was thinking of um, earlier today was before the uh, we went into lockdown in 2020. And so it was the last time I was going to be uh, grocery shopping for a while and everybody had been in the stores. Um, and so this was uh, towards the end of March 2020 and my birthday is towards the end of March. And so one of the things I wanted was a uh, cake. And one of the things, you know, that was cleared of the shelves were things you could mix um, easily. And so I got to the cake section and I knew the cake I wanted and the frosting I wanted. And there was another woman there who, um, she um, was having the same experience as me. And when I look back, I think, you know, I think we were both in that phenomenon that you find when groups of people are sort of worrying about something together, they're often, you know, feeling, I was feeling this way, like, wow, we're all in the same boat. We're here, you know, at the grocery store, everybody's wanting what they think they're going to need for a while, and the shelves are bare when it comes to certain things. And so, um, you know, I don't remember who said something first, but it was kind, you know, it was just a, a kind statement, kind of communicating that, like, wow, here we are, this is going on. And um, like, I don't know what to do, you know, I'm, I mean, it's, for my birthday, I guess I could just say I'm not I'm not gonna have a cake this year. And she's like, well, let's just look. And so she was helping me and we were looking, then we're brainstorming and there are brownie mixes left. And I think I came home with a, a brownie mix. <laughs> we had figured out I could stick a candle in it, you know. Um, so you you know, that's an example. You know, if if I think I had brought walked into the grocery store in the state of mind, like, oh my gosh, you know um i don't want to be here and i got to get out of here as fast as possible i mean other times when i've been in that frame of mind i've i think i've actually been rude when i look back here you know someone's trying to take their time maybe in front of the cake mix and i'm just like uh excuse me i gotta grab my thing you know fast and get out of there because it's just everyone's in the way and i you know i'm not um I'm not in the right space for it, but um, in the other state I, of mind, I, things happen. Yeah. Could you remind yeah. me? Right. If I'm the same way, and and every once in a while, when I'm irritated or trying to pass somebody, I realize they're just like me, and and I try to practice kindness, and suddenly the drive becomes pleasant, and I have a much better time. But it's it's very mundane, but it's it's transforming, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And you know, and driving's another thing that has come to mind um, for me um, when I think of of practicing kindness or what gets in the way of practicing kindness, and you know how you can you can shift uh, from one to the other um, in those scenarios. So. Yeah, well, you think of road rage. I mean, it can be very dangerous if you don't have a way to pull back. 
and kind of, you know, feel kindly toward people. Um, Speaking of that, how do you feel internally when somebody shows you kindness? How does it affect you? You've talked about it a little bit with the version about shopping, but I wonder if there are other occasions too that you felt somebody be genuinely kind and what impact that's had. Yeah, so I mean, I in thinking about it, I like it. I like people that a lot better when they're treating me with kindness. I. Um, and I feel, I feel a lot better about myself when I'm liking people. So, um, you know, rather than being annoyed at them. So, um, you know, I mean, there have been a lot of people who have been, been kind to me. Um, I guess those are the first things that, that come to mind that I, I like them better. And then I think I'm probably more likely to be kind in return and so i see a lot of the sort of reciprocal i mean in the grocery store that's a good example it's almost like if you start then it'll be reflected back to you in some way you know helpful suggestions um and then you notice something about I me mean, kind of back in the at the cashier i've had people say something to me about you know the produce I'm buying and they'll share like the kind of soup they want to make or they like to make with it and now we're sharing soup recipes right so I, you know there's the if if they start then it kind of invites the same for me if I start it invites the same from them so um there's a really nice um reciprocity there that uh you know, it just makes everything nicer. Well, it certainly connects. Yeah. And in, in our society, it's so, um, people are so kind of isolated, no matter how packed in we are with each other. It seems like such a wonderful tool for helping connections so people aren't feeling so isolated. Um, is it something that you look for in close friendships and relationships you choose to pursue? Yeah, I, you know, I don't think I'm consciously looking for that as a trait necessarily, but um, when I reflect on it, it's definitely true that who I'm drawn to, you know, um, are people who are seeming kind toward me, you know, um, definitely more so than people who aren't seeming that way. So, you know, my reflex is to stay away from people who are seeming unkind or, or it's, you know, or I'm finding myself upset with them because of how they're behaving. I, um, not really wanting to find myself in interactions with people like that so much. And, you know, there've been occasions when I'm even actively trying to stay away from people who've been unkind in the past. I just, you know, so I think both things are true. You know, I, I'm drawn to people who are kind and not drawn to people who aren't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is personal benefits over time as you practice kindness. And um, what are some of the obstacles that you have to keeping your mind in a kind place? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the benefits of the kindness practice, if you take the grocery store as an example, um, you know, or I guess some of what I've mentioned that the, the interactions tend to be more positive as a result of, of, you know, trying to feel kindly toward people. And then over time, having that, um, those positive interactions occur, I, it's made it easier for me to feel like the world can be a friendly place, that it is a friendly place. And um, it, in general, you know, helps me feel like there's, there's goodness in people and therefore good, you know, in the larger world. When I'm feeling that way, I feel more safe and secure. And, you know, those feelings kind of lend themselves just to feeling happier in general. And, um, the other thing I notice is uh, I worry less about bad things that can happen to other people too. 
So, you know, the better I'm feeling about my experience in the world, the more I'm, I'm able to imagine that other people, you know, are having good things happen too. And it, it gives me confidence that, um, you know, the world's a, it's okay. It's okay out there, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's even better than okay. It's actually good. Good things, you know, happen and that the potential for that is in us. And when we're treating each other that way, that's the way it goes. You know, it goes well. Certainly, if it were to catch on, humanity <laughs> would be such a much, much more fun place. Yeah. You know? And the world yeah. is so much exponentially more safe and satisfying for all of us, right? Um, yeah. Of course, there are obstacles to maintaining kindness. What, are, what yeah. are some ways that you overcome those obstacles when you get thrown off your game by something? Yeah. So um, the biggest obstacles to maintain Maintaining kindness for me that I see right away when I'm thinking about it are um, their their fear fear especially feeling unsafe in some way myself or being afraid that others are about to be hurt or could be hurt in some way and so um, this is where I was thinking about driving in Northern Virginia this is where I see it and I've been in you know this kind of situation many times so it's not unusual for um, we have a lot of traffic here and lot, lots of rush hours and um, not unusual for people to come up fast behind you and cut you off. And, um, you know, there's a immediate reflex in me. I'm afraid. I'm usually also afraid of, afraid of being hit, but um, simultaneously often angry, you know, definitely not feeling kindness towards people driving that way. So um, when I think about, well, what's the way to um, overcome that in that situation? You know, what I noticed is um, needing to really assess. That's the first step is to assess, is there actually really danger, you know, now? I mean, so car, let's say a car has cut me off. They're ahead of me now. Um, I notice I'm not really feeling so nice towards them. Um, and so usually the first thing I have to do is sort of ask myself, are you are you okay? <laughs> and then there's a kind of like positive self-talk that I'm I'm trying to find, right? And so if I am safe, um, I'm trying to really feel the truth of that, right? I didn't get hit, I'm safe in my car. Everyone around me is okay. No one's coming toward me, you know. And then usually it kind of goes on from there. You know, what's going to happen next? You know, some kind of, you know, grounding kind of reminder. When the light turns green, I'm going to turn left, and you know, I'm going to, you know, as best I can, safely move myself along to where I'm going. And in that space, as my self feels safer really knows that I'm safe, usually then it's it's this, you can feel it happening. There's this openness to, you know, and I hope everyone else around me is safe too. You know, so, and then now, now I'm back in that feeling kindly toward people. And I do a lot of, of um, that as a kind of self-soothing when I, I'm afraid driving around here. Um, I'm safe. And may you be safe. Even the person who's cut me off, you know, um, on the interstate, you know, sometimes I see people who are, you can tell the drivers, they're like getting a charge out of, you know, going in and out. You can see them coming behind you and then you can see them doing it all the way ahead of me. <laughs> and so, you know, first step, where do I want to position myself in relation to them so I can calm myself down? I them ahead of me. I feel better when I can see where they are. And then once I'm calm, you know, I really, I really can genuinely start to feel like I hope they get where they're going safely. I hope they don't hurt anyone else. Um, I hope everyone around them is safe. 
and that's all you know kindness uh, kindness practice so um yeah the obstacles are are that fear and danger uh, <laughs> yeah of kind thoughts help switch the channel out of fear and anger into kindness again like yeah this. once i know i'm safe you know and so you know and and in that assessment am i safe like at the light you know by the time that's all happened you you I ask myself that and i say yeah i'm good you know but i gotta go through the whole process to know that and calm down <laughs> and then at that point it's like yeah okay and i want you all to be okay too and then with the interstate dipping in and out um I think the assessment for myself around danger then is like, I think I, you know, in those cases will often come to the conclusion that really is not safe. And then I'm, it's a more strategic kind of thing I have to do, you know, to, to calm my nervous system down. Like I actually have to be in a certain lane and I have to be a certain distance and, you know, and then, and then, um, then it's like, okay, and, and now I can, I can wish you well well you know and everyone you else kind of whole concept of compass into a single practice because <laughs> it starts out with mindfulness and self-calming to get your nervous system calm and then equanimity yeah. and gratitude and then kindness you know forgiveness and kindness and so you've got them all in a single practice there um <laughs> which which brings me to my last question would you be willing to share uh, a brief meditation with us on kindness. Yeah, yeah, I have one. Um, this came uh, from Tara Mandala, and it's it's one I practice with a group of people uh, regularly. So this is a, lo a loving kindness meditation. And um, we started with uh, nine deep, relaxation breath with long exhalation. And so for the first three breaths, you're breathing in and bringing your breath to any tension in your body and you're releasing that tension with the exhalation. And for the second three breaths, you're inhaling into any emotional tension you're feeling, noticing where you're holding that in your body and releasing that with the exhalation. And then lastly, for the last three breaths, you breathe into any mental tension so notice where you're holding nervousness or worries or mental blockages in your body and you're releasing those with the exhalation. And then for the next part, we generate a heartfelt motivation to practice, in this case, loving kindness for the benefit of ourselves and for all beings. So we, we do this meditation with our eyes closed and we start with um, thinking of, of three people in your life. So on your left, you're placing, thinking of, you know, imagining, visualizing a beloved uh, or a good friend someone you really like, that's who's gonna be on your left. And then once you've got that picture in front of you, you place a neutral person, which would be someone you ignore, maybe you don't notice. It might be someone in your life who you don't really think much about or feel one way or another about, someone you're not really very connected to so you're just kind of picturing them in front of you and 
And once you've got them in your mind, on your right, you're placing an enemy or a difficult person, someone you have challenges with, or someone you have energy around right now um, that uh, you've had challenges with in the past, even, or currently you might have a grudge against them. It might not even be someone you see anymore, but you know, when you're thinking of who you don't want to be around, they come to mind. And so, so now you've got the person on the left who you feel close to and unequivocally like or love. And in front of you, you've got the neutral person that you're not really caring about one way or another. And on the right, you've got an enemy or person who you're having uh, challenges with. And we start with the person you dislike. And you just notice how you feel about them. You know, what are your feelings in relation to them? Physically or emotionally? You notice how you feel about how they look and maybe how they move. How you feel about the sound of their voice their political views, just, just their energy, how you feel about that. And then you're noticing, you know, any aversion you might have and thinking about how that developed. You know, did they do something to you? Um, how is it that you find them irritating? So you're, you're getting a really felt sense of their energy and how you feel toward them. And so keeping that awareness of them, you know, you can feel them sitting right next to you. You might feel like you don't want them, you know, sitting so close, keeping that feeling, then feel on your left side, the person you love or like, you know, the person you feel positively toward. And you're noticing those same things, you know, how you feel about how they uh, are physically, how you feel about them emotionally, how you feel about how they look or how they move, how you feel about the sound of their voice, their political views, and their energy. And then you're just noticing the closeness you have with this person and the desire to have them close. Maybe there's even a longing or craving for that person, or you might notice just a nice feeling of love and comfort. So you're really noticing how that feels. And then thinking about your relationship with them and how that developed, how your love or attraction to them developed how they've been good to you, maybe noticing how they've supported you, and all the reasons why you feel this way about them. And then keeping that feeling of, you know, the challenging person on the right and the not so challenging person on the left, then in front of you, see the neutral person, so see this person who you don't really have a strong connection with one way or the other necessarily you don't maybe like them or dislike them you're not maybe paying too much attention to them and notice how that feels how do you feel about this person physically emotionally how you feel about how they look, their appearance, how they move, how you feel about their voice, their political views, and their energy. And so then you're noticing this not caring energy. You know, you might notice not making any particular effort to get to know them or you might notice not really liking them or disliking them, just feeling kind of disconnected from them. So 
So now that you've got them kind of in front of you and you know how you're feeling toward them all, you begin with um, generating loving kindness within yourself and from the depths of your heart you try you imagine offering them and feeling towards them connected and appreciating um, all of them these three and in particular we start with you're pouring out loving kindness and recognizing that that all beings have the capacity to be kind as well just the way you're trying to be kind they too can um, be kind we all have that capacity so we're offering this loving kindness trying to display our own goodness we're not seeking any confirmation back from them so this is an unconditional um, offering of loving kindness simply offered from the depths of our heart and then this is love that you're offering to all beings so the three in front of you but all beings in addition to them and this is love that transcends the desires we have for those we normally love that we wish to receive something from so we're really trying to stay away from aversion or um, you know wanting something in return and we're trying to stay away from, you know, ignoring people. So this is being offered to all beings. We expand our loving kindness to include everyone. You can expand it out then to your family and friends, even family members or friends who can be difficult or, or might be diff being difficult. Expand it out to any people in the room you might be in or in your house if they're in different rooms. Or you can um, think of the people outside of your house in your neighborhood. And you can keep expanding it out from there. So expanding it to your community, you know, to the whole state you live in, to the whole country all the beings to people in other countries until you you gradually expanded this out to the whole world in all directions so you're offering all the beings loving kindness which can include wishes that they be free from fear and suffering. And you just keep spreading it out in all directions to include the whole universe, the inconceivable, immeasurable universe. So you're really letting it go into an experience of immeasurable love and boundlessness. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And it's sometimes interesting to notice if you feel different somehow. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah, you're welcome. It totally calms the mind and opens the heart when you do that. Yeah. That kind of infinite love. Nobody's yeah. harmed. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Mm -mm. It certainly yeah. benefits us when we do. Yeah, that. right. I, I feel do, great, <laughs> and I do think it benefits people we bump into. It's like mm -hmm. there's goodness around. You know? Yeah, yeah. I feel so much better when I can feel the truth of that, and it's easier to recognize it too when. You know, the more I feel it, the more I can recognize it 
when it's happening or the opportunities, you know, to really acknowledge it when it's there. So, and then good things happen. Yeah. It does. It does. <laughs> um, deep gratitude. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me to do this.